The movement that followed in the wake of Julia's graffiti emerged from many precincts and quarters, cutting across land and time zones, but oriented towards that peculiar intersection of generations X, Y, and Z. Largely white, surprisingly impoverished in their own eyes, people from whom the irony has never escaped, but who themselves cannot escape irony. The sort of people who might read a novel by Don, Don, by Don DeLillo and decide that the phrase, child of Godard and Coca-Cola, applies to them, despite the fact that such clever-sounding untruths apply to nobody. <laughs> Julia was already becoming incor incorrectly famous, though she never took credit for the graffiti. Here is how the movement started. Five friends living in Brooklyn put a video on the internet. It was mostly text, white on a black background. Hello, we think Peter needs Fishman, real estate de developer, is the devil. We are going to ex exorcise him, but we need your help. We just want your half. Then a woman appeared, Elise actually, outside the stadium with the letters A, L, and F prominent behind her, spoke. Half the money in your pockets right now. Half the rides on your Metro card. Cut to Devon, sitting in a small t apartment, small kitchen, an elbow on a Formica table. Half the time you are going to spend masturbating this week. Half the drama you create just by existing. Then he mugged for the camera and whispered in a falsetto, so lonely. Brian Bernstein, with a neat haircut and thick shoulders, a football player gone to seed, except he never could catch a ball. Half the time you spend being queer in here. I've already committed half the time I've previously spent getting used to it. Another woman, Jory Torres, earrings like satellite dishes. Half the time you spend control compiling annoying pop culture references. She raised a fist and shook it lightly. Autobots, roll out! A man in a mask. It smiles, features pointed brows and a sharp beard, depicting Guy Fox. The mask was featured in a film popular a few years ago. Half the efforts you put into making life better for yourself while increasing entropy and in some small way sending us all hurtling that much faster toward the heat death of the universe. His voice was distant sounding and muffled by the th th stiff plastic of the mask and the tiny slit that made do with a mouth hole. Then back to black and the title cards. We're not telling you what to do. We're just telling you to do something. Julia, living as she was out of a new construction condo unit in a building that had just opened to buyers, was unaware of the video. The condo had electricity, but no appliances save a stainless steel refrigerator freezer that made four kinds of ice and warned its owner when the milk was about to go bad. As remarkable as the device was, it did not have internet access. Julia's cellular phone did have internet access but she didn't think to use it to check for videos featuring her, sl featuring her slogan, or Fishman. She spent the days lying on the carpeted floor, sure that passers-by would see her in the window if she walked across the empty rooms, and just as sure that she'd feel the vibrations of the hustle and blather of a thick, accented realtor coming up the steps. The wasp larvae in her blood and muscles twitched and burned, demanding action. Graffiti covered the brick walls of the neighborhood, stencils the sidewalks. Except for the chains and franchises, McDonald's, Limpy, Starbucks, those with the resources to pay for constant repainting of walls. No one dared sandblast anymore. Police lexica of graffiti tags and gang symbols needed daily updating. What the fuck, it was being asked frequently? Did I can't have neighborhood? and gentrification cat is gentrified? Me. <laughs> and not even its author knew what to make of invisible hegemonic postmodern urbanist geographies, which was sprayed across the anchorage of the Williamsburg Bridge in a glow-in-the-dark color not easily identifiable. There were the performances. 50 people standing as still as statues on the sidewalks and in the streets during morning rush, stealing moments of attention, grinding the flow of traffic to a halt. The fishbowl makes me sick, screamed a 15-year-old boy before he forced himself to vomit on fishmen at the Aleph Sadiq Aleph dinner. Eight of his confederates, strategically positioned in tables all over the Great Net Catering Hall, joined the puke in at that moment, splattering their suits with partially digested potatoes dyed red, white, and blue. <laughs>
This is how we tame political movements. We find the activist fringe of the status quo, those who will pour their energy and time into an endeavor, taking personal and organizational responsibility. They have resources, expertise, rhetoric that sounds very compelling. They are success. They speak of meetings in Washington, Albany, Athens, or The Hague. How poor their grandparents, glove makers, and steam laundry workers to a person were back when the world was scratchy and sepia-toned. We find the aspirational fringe of the subaltern, the mighty fish of the tiniest puddles, the disaffected golden child, the wired yet rumpled intellectual working far beneath his or her potential. Those who will show up at every meeting, take most of the reasonable risks, who will accept payment in newspaper photos and lazy smiles from younger lovers, the men and women who buy books they never have time to read, who eat fried rice they make themselves because they like it. When we cannot find them, we make them. Then it's fairly easy. The members of the status quo with all the resources and social legitimacy make a great rush toward the target, a war, a change in legislation, the change in status of some minority or counter-hegemonic group, and then pull back, do something else, vote for a political party, Hold a vigil, candles lighting the night. Select a few capable individuals, the majority always from the status quo faction, and then and have them form a committee to negotiate a surrender. Remind the world that the movement exists by pointing out the members of the extreme faction and how threatening they are. Remind the movement that the world exists and that it's full of semi-somnambulant television watchers who hate all people of color and homosexuals in the name of Jesus. It works nearly every time. But this movement, the movement sans nom, as it was called by Elise, who always wanted to find a reuse for her French, was somewhat different. There would be no coalitions, no com committees, no media except for the hydra-headed and toad internet. And the movement hardly seemed to care at all whether any of the various actions were effective. But there was going to be Friday, brilliant, glorious Friday, when all the movement would come together outside the fishbowl and be reminded of their ultimate insignificance.